Welcome to Data Structures with Professor Caleb. Today I'd like to talk about queues. This is a familiar concept to us. We stand in lines all the time. We use taxi cabs that have been waiting in line, first cab getting the next customer each time. We understand this concept of first come, first served. And that is exactly what a queue is all about. So more formally, a queue is a linear list of elements where one end is designated as the front and the other as the rear. We have operations that are very similar to our stack operations. Is empty. Does the queue have any elements in it? Front. Give me the value of that first element in the queue. In queue. Add an element to the rear of the queue. DQ. Take that element off of the front of the queue. Using a queue, fairly straightforward. We in queue at one end and we dequeue at the other. We will notice that as we put things onto the queue, we're going to do them in the same order in which we expect them to come back off. So we add each item. And then similar to what we did with our stack, we can pull the items off and pull them into our string. And this works in some ways very similarly, but completely opposite to the way our stack worked. Though the is empty piece in our basic logic structure is the same. We have two major implementation choices. We can do them as arrays or as linked lists. So this is very similar again to our stacks, except that in this case, it is very, very clear that our simpler implementation choice is the linked list. The data will be a singly linked list with both head and tail pointers. We typically will call the head front when we're referring to it as a queue, though when we're actually implementing it, we'll often stick with the head name simply because it's more familiar to us. And then we have the rear or back of the queue, the tail of the list. So with the linked list implementation, is empty will simply check for a null head reference or pointer, just as we do with the stack. Front is going to return the value in the head node. So that is familiar to us. We will in queue values at the end of the list, at the tail, because this is efficient. We can do that in constant time, even with a singly linked list, very simple. And DQ will remove things at the head of the list. So it actually does make quite a bit of sense. The head of the list is the front of the queue. The tail of the list is the back or rear of the queue. Array implementation for queues is a little bit more interesting because our space is fixed. We don't want to shift items. So we could imagine that we did something like my logical representation of the queue, where we simply shift the items down. But we don't want to do that because we want constant time operations. And that we have to move every single item in the queue down. That's a linear operation. That's going to take a long time compared to what we prefer. So what we're going to do instead is to treat the array as circular with the front index chasing the rear index around the array. And then in an empty queue, we'll simply have both as minus one. So let's look at what happens here. We in queue the in, so it goes into the four. Dequeue a couple of things, so we're moving the front index. Then as we in queue more things, we're increasing the rear index. Go ahead and dequeue. Now at this point, we have a problem. If we simply add one to the rear, seven plus one is going to be out of bounds. That would be eight. This would cause us an error. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap around the array using the remainder operator. So rear, each time we increase rear, we're going to do it as rear gets rear plus one mod our array size. So that way we just keep going around and around the array. 
we'll do the same thing as we increase front. So in queuing I will cause rear to wrap around to the zero and we'll enqueue there. So array implementation our is empty will check the value of front or rear, make sure not minus one. Front is going to return the value at the index front. NQ is going to increment rear, doing the mod, and insert the value at the new index. DQ is going to do a similar thing with front, possibly returning the value that was at the old index. Now there is one way in which we could make our array approach a little bit easier to deal with in some respects. Though it's important if, if we do this, that we remember what we're doing as we do all of the logic, because this makes minor changes throughout. The idea here is that rear, instead of being the index of the last item we inserted, it's going to be the index where the next item will go. So empty then becomes when rear and front are the same. And so instead of comparing to minus one, we're going to simply compare them to each other. If they're the same, then our queue is empty. Otherwise, it's going to work in much the same way. Big difference is before we increment rear, we go ahead and do the insertion. Then we do that increment. So queues, of course, have quite a few applications. They're used to implement waiting lists of all sorts of different kinds. One place we see them quite a bit is running simulations. So we often have questions we want to ask about how things are working in the real world, or if we changed a process, how would that change people's waiting times, that kind of thing. So any simulation that involves lines or waiting your turn, uh, queues will be used in. Managing or simulating an assembly line. At one point, I was working with some alumni from a major manufacturing uh, company. And so one of the programs that we did was a queue program that was managing their assembly lines. And of course, there are many uses of queues in relation to more complex data structures and algorithms. They're often used in similar places to where we use our stacks. So we can change our more complex algorithm to work in different ways by using a queue or by using a stack. So now that you have a bit of an idea of what queues are all about, thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time.